In today's video, you are going to learn how to take a simple text animation and change it into this cool liquid melting animation. And the cool thing about this is that this is completely procedural, so you can change the text element and the animation will update automatically. We will do this in four main steps. First, we will create a falling letters animation. Then we will create a transition to melt the text into a puddle. We will create liquid droplets. And finally, we will animate and shape the puddle to bring this all together. So let's start from step one. If we look at the animation, we can see that before it melts, the text loses its balance and enters into the puddle right over here. So let's create that. I have this text animation which morphs from one font to the other already set up in here. I already have a video tutorial on how this can be done. So simply check the description below to see how you can do this. Now for this part, we're going to focus on how we're going to melt this text. Let's go to the last text in here and we're going to open it right over here. And in here, we're going to go over animate first add in position right over there. And as you can see, it creates an animator for us. Now I'm immediately going to rename this melting animation one so that we have everything organized in here. And I also need to add some more properties. So let's find rotation right over here and add that right over there. And then we're also going to add a property tracking. So it's right down below tracking. And now we are going to give these some values. So first the position, I want to lower it. So something around 140 would be good. Perfect. Rotation, I'm going to rotate it something around 45 degrees, 45. And the tracking amount, I'm going to increase it to something like 50. Since the text kind of opens as it, as it falls down. Now we need to create the animation for this, the transition from normal text to this text. So let's go to range selector, open it, add a keyframe to the offset. Let's toggle the stopwatch right over there. And I'm going to move this to around the one second mark somewhere around here. And we're going to set to 100%. And now we're going to move a few frames forward to around the five second mark somewhere around here. And we're going to set this value to minus 100. So right now, if I see the animation here, we can see this happening like that. It goes back up. It doesn't really make sense. So it comes down and it goes back up, but we're going to fix that very quickly. So let's go to advanced here. And what we need to change is this value shape. We're going to change it to ramp. So now, as you can see, it goes down like that. Perfect. Looks already quite good. Wonderful. And I'm going to tweak a little bit the graph of this. So let's pick both of, of those keyframes. We're going to press F9 on our keyboard and that will easy ease them. And then I'm going to simply pick the back keyframe and push it a little bit back so that it will end and slower in here. So the flatter it is, the slower it is. And let's preview that. Wonderful. It already falls down quite great, but it is not random at all. So to randomize it, I'm simply going to toggle this randomize order. And let's see how that looks. We're going to do one last step. We're going to go over this melting animation and we're going to duplicate it. Command D on your keyboard, just like that. And let's open that. So in here, the only thing that we're going to change is we're going to go to rotation and give it to minus 75, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to go to range selector from here. And we're going to go to advanced. And from here, we're going to go to amount and make it 50%. This way, it only affects 50% of the characters and it will be more random. So some of the characters lean this way, some of the characters lean the other way. We can go to random seed and we can give it a different value, something like 50, for instance. And each time we change this, the animation would have a unique value, a unique animation here. So let's see how that looks. And that looks quite good. Now, the great thing about this is that we can go to the main title in here and we can go in here and we can type in whatever we like in the first title in here. And that will change the animation for all the layers. Now we are going to create this nice transition from the text to the puddle. But first I would like to kindly ask you please to like this video. This really helps me to reach more people. And as a thank you, I can share some project files maybe with you. So please let me know in the comment section below. I can specifically share the morphing text presets. Let me know. So let's go 
to a new composition right over here and simply drag that text that we were working on into this new composition. And the first thing that we need to do is to increase its size to around 400. Great. And I'm going to go to this little button here, continuous rasterize so that it, it keeps its quality. Now I'm going to find the time where it is still straight right over here. And I'm going to create a quick layer in here. So let's zoom out a little bit. And I would like to create a layer like this so that it cuts right under it. And now we can go to fill and make sure that we have the fill on. So we're going to hold Alt on our keyboard and cycle through these until we have a solid fill right over that. And then we are going to remove the stroke. Do the same thing, hold Alt on your keyboard and cycle through these until it is set to none. So, and we're going to rename this layer to Met. And now we're going to pick this text 01 in here. We're going to toggle this switch from here and we're going to go to track mat and link it to that mat. And now this text, when we scroll down, we can see that it disappears into that layer since it is only showing over that layer. And we're going to find the time where this thing starts going down. So I'm going to pick this layer. I'm going to duplicate it, command D on your keyboard, and then I'm going to split it. Shift, command D on your keyboard and delete the first part. Like this, we only have this part of the layer right over here. And with this thing, we are going to go over the track mat that we have already done, and we're simply going to invert it. So we're going to click this button. If we hide the first layer in here, it is only showing when this goes out of that mat. So let's talk about that back on. So we're going to go to effects and presets, add a fast box blur effect, and simply drag and drop that right over here. We're going to change this to affect only the horizontal and we're going to increase this to around 50. Now, step two is a curves effect. So let's go to curves and bring in that effect right over here, right over that layer. And with this, we're going to go to the alpha channel and we're going to increase the alpha channel to make it much darker, basically. We're going to go over the scale of this, press S on your keyboard to open the scale of this layer, unlink the X and Y, and then we're going to decrease this to around 180. And then we can move it down until we can see it. Something like that. Great. So now we can see that paddle forming. And now let's rename this to paddle one. So go over the layer and rename it to paddle one. And then we are going to duplicate this. So control D on your keyboard or command D. And we have now two paddles. And let's press S on our keyboard to open up the scale. And this time we're going to have a 300% value. We're going to align it so that at first it is not visible. So now if we have a look at this, we can see that the text goes up and then it goes down into that puddle. Now with this done, we are going to create a small animation here to animate it up and down so that we can see the streaks and the droplets forming in here. So we are going to go to the first keyframe of this layer, click type P on our keyboard to open the position, click on the stopwatch and then we are going to lower it down in here so that it starts from the bottom right over here. And we are going to go right over here and we are going to bring that back to 960 exactly how it was. Wonderful. And now, now we are going to go to the middle and we are going to pull it up Some, somewhere around here would be good, I think. So we're going to select the keyframes, open the graph editor and let's press F9 on our keyboard. And then we are going to go to the middle and flatten this really well in here, just like that. And we're going to make it very steep at the start so that it shoots up. And as you can see, this small effect really sells the melting animation. So step two ready. Let's now see how we can create these nice droplets and the actual shape of the puddle right over here. So let's jump back to our text animation that we have done. And from here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick the mat and duplicate that just like that. And now we are going to go over these text layers in here and we're going simply to pre-compose this. So right click and pre-compose. Let's rename this to animation and click on OK. Let's jump back now to the previous composition right over here. Now we are going to duplicate this just like that. And we're going to hide that for now. And we're going to go over this layer and we're going to drag and drop a curves effect right over here. And we're going to go to the RGB in here, switch it to alpha and do the same thing we have done before and increase the alpha 
bring a new effect in here, simple shoker. And we are going to drag that right over there. And we are going to give this a value of eight. And this basically reduces the edges of this, of this whole thing right over here. Duplicate this one more time. And we are going to rename this previous layer to simple choker. And now let's go to the newly duplicated layer. Let's delete the simple choker effect from here and the curves effect. We can even remove the visibility of the first layer right over here. And now we are going to add a set matte effect, drag and drop it right over that. And we can select the simple choker effect right over here and make sure that the source is set to effects and masks. And now we can click on the invert matte. And this way it uses only the inverse of this. So it only shows the edge. And now we are going to add an effect named echo. And this will basically echo in time this animation. We're going to set these values. So make sure to set the echo time to some, somewhere around minus 0 0.01. And the number of echoes, we're going to set it to 20 and the decay something to 0 0.95 so that it decays by 0 0.5 five inch time. And if we preview that, we can see what that does. It basically echoes this text over time like that. That looks quite good. So let's see what else we can do. We can add another effect named Raffian Edges and let's drag that right over there. And now we're going to set this up. So first we're going to go to border uh, five, a value of five that will make it sharper. Then the sharpness, we're going to set it to the maximum value to around 10 and Scale, we're going to set that to 30. Complexity, we can set that to one. And finally, evolution, we can animate that very simple in here. Simply hit Alt on your keyboard on the stopwatch in here, click on the stopwatch and type in time times 50. This way, it just animates it over time. Okay. And like that, we can see how that looks. Drag a quick effect in here named fill. And with this, we can recolor this. So let's make it to a nice blue somewhere around there. Now, this looks quite good already, but we are going to duplicate this rough edges effect and this will make the droplets look more like water. Perfect. And to achieve this look, make sure that the properties are set up exactly or very similar to this. Now, to create the shape, final shape of the puddle right over here, let's first rename this layer to liquid particles. And we are going to add a new adjustment layer. So right click new and find adjustment layer from right there. And you're going to find the exact spot where the puddle is forming. So somewhere around here, I'm going to split this adjustment layer. So command shift D on your keyboard and delete the first part. And we can zoom a little bit in here and see that right over here. And immediately we can use this mat that we have duplicated earlier. So I'm going to link it to that. Now this mat is for the upper part. So I want this adjustment layer to only affect the puddle, which is right down right here. So I'm simply going to invert this mat so that it affects what is down right over here only. Let's go to liquid particles from here. And I'm simply going to copy the raffin edges effect and we're going to paste it right over here and then mo modify it slightly. So let's go to border and we're going to change it to 40. Let's go now to scale and change it to 200. Awesome, so this looks great. The only thing is that is it is not animated. And if we look very closely in here, we can see that the text remains quite solid in here, which is not typical of something that is melting. So let's fix that. So let's first go over this adjustment layer and duplicate it, Command D on your keyboard, and we're going to remove this roughen edges effect. And we're going to introduce a new effect named turbulent displays, so simply Add it right over there. So let's give it an amount of 20 and a size of 50 and complexity of two. And then we can go to the offset turbulence from here. And I'm going to keyframe that right over there. Open it up, hit you on your keyboard to reveal that keyframe and uh, go maybe to around here. And we're going to animate it like this and even downward maybe so that it animates as it goes down. And like that, we have that nice subtle animation over the puddle. So let's now combine this melt effect so that this text actually melts into this puddle. So now I'm going to pick the roughing edges effect 
that was on the liquid particles. So let's copy that command C. And now let's go to the first layer of where the text is, the animation. So if we solo it, and I'm going to paste this roughen edges effect right over that. And I want now to keyframe this. So let's go to where this whole thing starts to melt in here. And I'm going to keyframe the border and add a keyframe to the S sharpness and the scalar. And now I'm going to set this to 20, the edge sharpness to zero and the border to zero, just like that. Perfect. So like that, it doesn't have any effect over the text. Hit U on our keyboard to open the keyframes and move a few frames forward to somewhere around here. And now I can change the border to 50 and change the edge sharpness to 10 and the scale to around 30. So like that, if I preview that, you can see how the actual text is melting inside into that other. And now our animation looks like that. Perfect. One final step is I'm going to go to the adjustment layer where we have the turbulent displace effect on. I'm simply going to bring in a fill effect and I'm going to give it a color, the same color of the droplets to sell this effect altogether. So that's basically it guys, I hope that you learned something, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe, this really helps us to produce more content and I am going to leave a link to the text morphing video right over here, so make sure to give that a watch.